We're at Fresno's Diocesan Congress, taking a closer look at technology and the church. Our websites, our YouTube channels, our Facebook pages, that's the front door of our parish, that virtual world. We teach people to be mindful of the media, but with the faith perspective. If you're not online, they don't know that you exist, especially, especially for the younger generation. You have to go where the people are, and the people are online. I'm Edgar Guzman. We're here at the Visalia Convention Center, where many of the diocesan faithful are gathered. Everyone has gathered here for a day filled with worship and workshops exploring topics of interest to people of faith across the diocese. Technology and the church is one of the threads of today's conference. And when it comes to sharing the faith through the web, social media, and other modern tools, Lisa Hendy is showing the way. Lisa is a creator of CatholicMom.com, the award-winning website and the blog site that attracts tens of thousands of visitors daily. She has clearly embraced the technology as an essential component of her faith life. Lisa, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, you know how busy you are. Thank you. It's an honor. It's so fun to be here this weekend. Very, very excited to have you. And you can tell the excitement already in, in this building. And you just finished the talk, right? Right. I just finished my first session on selfies and souls. Oh, awesome. That's what <laughs> I love to do, selfies and souls. Uh, in, throughout your numerous, your numerous uh, responsibilities and positions, how do you see those filling the void or a void or playing the role within our church? What's the importance of that? And the amazing thing to me is that, you know, somebody like me, a housewife in Fresno who was an amateur at this and sort of still is that, you know, um, that I can be part of the, the new evangel evangelization in my own way using these mm. tools that I could serve my family and then at the same time be a part of the work of the church. And to me, technology has enabled that and it's a real blessing. There's, there's many um, older the generation that maybe don't use that mm -hmm. medium, right? uh, not so much on social media, and there's so much content out there that they're missing out on. How do you see we need to make link that? You know, I think um, a few things. First of all, I'd say it's interesting. We assume that um, the elderly in particular aren't using it, and yet at the same time, I know a lot of elderly people mm -hmm. that use social media, and they often are inspired, first of all, just as a way to keep in touch with their family. So mm -hmm. I'll use my mom as an example, although, Mom, I'm not calling you elderly, <laughs> um, that she loves Facebook because her grandchildren are sprinkled all over the United States. So she got on it actually initially as a way to connect with family, and that often happens. Um, but I'd say that you know so much of the wealth of the church is now contained online and so even if we do something as simple as having the youth of our parishes maybe reach out to some of the older people in the church and just show them a new app or show them a YouTube yeah. video or do something like that. So we have to create technology within our parishes that's beautiful, that's truthful, that's meaningful and easily accessible. And then we have to sometimes hold the hands of people who, for whom technology is a new discovery. And I think our youth and young adults can be a really key um, ingredient to that. Uh, one of the medias you use mm -hmm. is a uh, well-known media and been around for a very long time, <laughs> paper, books. Right. right? Uh, you just came out with The Grace of Yes. Right. Can you tell a little bit more about well, that? Well, The Grace of Yes was an interesting book for me. My other books have been for Catholic moms, but this book is really for anyone, and it's all about um, saying yes to God's will for our life and then what that means to the world around us. So when, when you and I give God our yes, I believe if we're following Christ that that means that then we're called to be generous spirits in the world around us. And so that's not just in terms of giving money, but often in terms of giving time or even just care and compassion to somebody in need. And you know, you've done this in your own life. You've answered yes to God in a way that you, way, it enables you to use some of the skills that you have to serve our church and to serve other people. And the book is really aimed at helping people figure out what is their yes, and then how are they being called to give it. Their, uh, the, the, what is their yes, I, I hear that and I think of saying yes to the Lord and giving their gifts to the Lord. Right. Does, does the media, the new media, technology, play a role in finding your gifts? 
Oh, absolutely. I mean, everything from, you know, how we um, connect in prayer communities to one another, to the ability that we have to learn online, um, but then also to research. Let's say a young person, you know, might have a calling in the back of their head to the priesthood or the religious life. There are so many great websites out there and YouTube videos. And, you know, we see church leaders like Bishop Robert Barron, who are out kind of on the forefront of using these tools in ways that are really exciting, really beautiful, really high world-class um, use of technology, but that's constantly driving people back to the truths of the gospel. And that's, you know, that's technology at its best. What, what do you see for some parishes as a possible solution that maybe don't have that driving force or a ministry targeted towards online? Uh, I think you and I both know the dangers of not having that. Right. If we don't have it, then our parishioners are going to go elsewhere to look for it. And you can bet that a lot of our other um, community churches have placed a priority on a great technological front door. So just in the same way that we want our parishes to be welcoming environments, when somebody comes through the door, we might have an usher there to help them to a seat or simply to welcome them. Our websites, our YouTube channels, our Facebook pages, that's the front door of our parish to the virtual world. So what kind of an impression are we creating? You know, when people come searching, as they often do, you know, before they come to Mass, they might do something as simple as look up Mass times. How mm -hmm. easy is it for them to find that? And then what else are they finding when they're there? And a lot of times people are searching because they have a, a question inside themselves about their own faith. They might not even be Catholic yet. They might wander across us. When they do find our website or our social media platforms, what are they finding to, to feed them, to nurture them, to educate them, and to welcome them? What would you say is uh, the startup kit <laughs> for, a, for a parish to, to become involved in the ministry. So, I mean, the first thing is we've been talking about like what it needs to be, but how do you get there um, mm. is really, you know, it's relatively simple. Our, our, our diocese has some resources that can be provided, but for somebody, you know, in a parish out there who's wondering about this, they want to start it. The first thing is that it's a team approach. So yeah. the pastor needs to be able to understand that there will be people in the community for whom this is, you know, a gift that they have. And then I also want to say like, let's, create a ministry of communications. And you know, you're a great example of somebody who's risen up out of interest in serving your church, but also a skill set that you have. And I think a lot of our young adults might not think to be an extraordinary minister of Holy Communion or a lector, mm. but they'd love to serve on our Facebook team or to be yeah. the Twitter leader in our parish. So how are we tapping into them in a ministerial sense um, to really call them to it? You know, the church needs them. We need you. We need the skills that you have. We need your enthusiasm, your excitement about the faith. Um, and, and how can we create it, not as you know a, a job, but as a ministry, because yeah. it really is. It's the evangelization. And it, yeah, and there's some people who do, do it as, as a job, like you said, right. and not just a job, but a ministry to go out and to reach out uh, beyond the pews, right? Um, but for those who are online and maybe are, are taking the, the seat and going along with us and what we're providing online, how easy it is to get lost with all the other, with everything else mm -hmm. online. What do you see are the dangers for the youth especially of not engaging them online, but having them, uh, I guess, get lost in all, everything else that's it's, out there. It's part of what I was just talking about in the class that I just did, which is um, for religious educators, we want to inform people about things like preparing themselves for sacraments. So, yeah. you know, for example, our confirmation kids. We want them to know all the teachings of the church, but we also need to arm their consciences to go out into mm -hmm. a world where digital, you know, these are digital natives and technology is, is not you know, it's now like the air that they breathe. It's yeah. such an organic part of their life. So we wouldn't send a kid out to drive a car without, you know, teaching them first the rules of the road and safety and giving them lessons. It's the same thing as technology. Um, I think we really need to be, as religious educators and as parents, forming our kids to use a tool, a tool that will help them in their future career, but also in their future vocation. 
and that can be somewhat harmful to their soul if the, if not used properly. So how are we arming them to see the red flags and you know to avoid making bad choices when it comes to use of this? And sometimes you don't know until you're right on top of something that it can be dangerous for you spiritually. So how you know how can we teach them to you know to see something and realize I need to make a different choice mm -hmm. here and redirect. Yeah. Now, you're only a few older than, years older than me. Um, <laughs> I say I'm about double. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, the tech that you grew up with in your yeah. childhood and the tech in my childhood vary greatly. Um, what, what tech in your childhood contributed to maybe your faith growing? So I, I tell uh, parents sometimes, I mean, when I was growing up, it was a big deal to have my own phone. And, it, and my phone had one of those long, <laughs> windy cords. Yeah. And my parents bought me a really long, windy cord so I could actually take my phone when I was in high school and go sit in my closet and have a private okay. conversation with my boyfriend. And it's not all that far away from... A, a, you yeah. know, a high school junior now wanting to have a cell phone so she can text with her friends. But my parents, for me, that was um, that was actually a right that I earned through getting yeah. good grades and being a good family member. And then it was not something, you know, it could be taken away. If I made a mistake, the phone was unplugged and it mm -hmm. went. And and so, you know, the, the tools might have changed, but some of those tactics that parents are using are, are still the same tried and true things, which is that, you know, this is a gift. It's not a privilege. Yeah. Um, or it is a privilege, something that you earn. It's not something that it is expected. You know, you don't just automatically get an iPhone or a, yeah. an iPad or whatever. Um, and and it's something that you know you earn. Um, so and a responsibility. The the synod on the family is mm -hmm. underway right now, and uh, this country's experience of fire that the, from the recent visit that you and uh, you and I were both at of uh, Pope Francis and he spoke about the family. How do you tie the importance of technology and the family? How do they go hand in hand? Well, I think it's a reality that our kids need these tools to be educated, to go out into a world and to understand how to communicate for business and things like that. But I, one thing that I kept hearing Pope Francis say over and over again um, that I want to especially reiterate is the importance of the elderly when we talk about being a church of pro-life that that means cherishing especially our grandparents mm -hmm. and the elderly and I see technology as a great way for kids to connect with and cherish relationships with the elderly so you know maybe for parents out there one thing might be if grandma and grandpa don't live right nearby that once a week you Skype with them or yeah. you know that you share photos regularly and that that's a way again to remind them how important they are through love letters and you know just important outreach so that's one good example that's um, I'm sure that's coming up in the Synod uh, <laughs> with the bishops right now uh, one of the points that they were speaking or they're gonna be talking about is the communication within the family but mm -hmm. the communications with the youth and amid the obsession obsession with technology what do you think needs to be done there? Well, I think we need to be modeling for, especially our younger people, appropriate use of technology. So don't just set rules for our kids, but also model. You know, I can say to my kids, don't text all the time. And then if they see me yeah. driving down the road texting, I'm, <laughs> I'm not discipling good behavior for them. Um, so that, that's, that's one thing. Um, but then I think also we need to remember to cherish our conversations with each other and, you know, to, to do things like have dinner together as a family or have you know the time that we're at the Eucharist together on Sundays be a screen free time mm. that the phones are put away that they're actually believe it or not turned off mm. um, and you know th that we enjoy this what we're having with each other a conversation where there's not a screen between us and we teach our kids the art and the joy of dialogue with each other very true um, now how do you manage <laughs> to get away from the screens, to turn off that cell phone. Do you do that? I, you know, I have to tell you that it's, I, I'm constantly asking people to pray for me and this is the one of the things that I need prayer for because we're so wired in and I mean, in, in my talk just now, I was talking about FOMO, the fear of missing oh, yeah. out that some of us, you know, we deal with this in our lives that we think, oh, if I'm not constantly checking, yeah. you know, my email or my work-related use of technology that I'm gonna fall behind. 
So for me, it's first of all, beginning my day in prayer that doesn't involve a screen mm -hmm. and that does involve the daily gospel, whether or not I can get to mass. Um, so that's a huge thing. Um, and then just taking moments in my day where it's put away, it's turned off. And for me, Sundays when I'm home is really a sacred time with my husband that, you know, when we're on our way to mass, um, I, I really try to keep my phone particularly turned off on Sunday mornings. Um, and, and really to just let that be a, a, almost a retreat type of experience. Pope Francis just tweeted about it today. We work so much, could we take Sunday as a day of rest? Yeah. Should I just stop calling you on Sundays <laughs> when you're in town? Um, and real quick, congratulations on your new position, oh, editor you. at large, right, with Ave Maria Press. <laughs> Uh, what can we expect from this another new role that you're taking on? <laughs> so that, uh, somebody asked me what that means. It's an editor that works in their pajamas. No. Um, it doesn't mean that I'm going to stop doing Catholic Mom or any of my other work. I'll be working with them part-time from Fresno to actually develop new book projects. Oh, awesome. So it's really exciting to help um, reach out to what are, you know, what are new projects, who are new authors that we can consider. And I really view it as a new way to serve the church. You mm -hmm. know, um, what do you want to read and how can I help you oh, bring absolutely. the books that are going to be meaningful to you in your spiritual journey? So I'm That's really grateful for that. So exciting. Where can we find, other than Catholic Mom, uh, some of more of your materials? Well, anywhere, the, any social me media platform, <laughs> if you just do a search for Lisa Hendy. I'm pretty much at Lisa Hendy and, you know, Twitter, Facebook. I love, you know, any kind of um, social media platforms and lisahendy.com. Awesome. Lisa, I know you got to run, uh, but thank you so much thank for this, uh, this few minutes that you're able to give and us. Thanks and thanks to KNXT. I'm yes, so KNXT, grateful for absolutely. our apostolate. It's, it, we're really, truly blessed to have you absolutely. and KNXT to be uh, just, you guys represent us so well <laughs> in the Diocese of Fresno. Thank you again, Lisa, thank so much. You. God bless thanks you. Thanks for the chance. If you're not online, they don't know that you exist, yeah. especially, especially for the younger generation. You have to go where the people yeah. are and the people are online.